welcome to my channel where today we're going to be painting this pretty orchid using Derwent Inktense blocks and maybe one or two of the pencils. So let's just talk about materials before we dive into the tutorial. The colours that I'm going to be using I'll explain as I work through. So I'm going to be using a number 8 size round, this is a faux squirrel brush, a flat synthetic brush for blending and this is my number 4 round. I'm going to be painting on a mixed media paper and we have a photograph that I printed out and I trace down this way. We provide you with a free trace down drawing and reference photograph as we work through and I'll explain to you later how you can obtain them for free. This is the little palette that I'm going to be using for mixing the colours and it comes in a set of two and all the materials I'm going to link underneath this video so let's get started. I have a clean glass of water and some kitchen paper to blot and we are good to go. I'm going to be using my number 8 size round to start my first wash and I'll be explaining to you as we work through this tutorial the number of ways that you can use these gorgeous blocks and you can see here the depth of colour that you can achieve. So first of all, what are ink tense blocks and how do they differ from watercolour? Well, first of all, and most importantly, when they're dry, they are permanent. So they are very, very buildable. It's important that you let each layer dry before you move on to the next. And as with watercolour, ink tense blocks, when you start to use them, definitely go through the ugly duckling stage. And you'll see that as we work through the tutorial. But don't worry, it's all part of the process. So I highly recommend that you stay right until the end of this video so that you can see how by building these layers up slowly and carefully, they can build into this beautiful painting at the end. So you can see that I've taken a mixture of the first colour, which is fuchsia, this is from the set of 12 and I think you can buy them individually but I will link this uh, set underneath this video here and I'm going to be applying this all over the orchid flower head like this apart from the centre. Now you'll see at this point that the ink is applied in a sort of really kind of messy way and I've also made a little splodge on my paper here and it's easy to remove by just using a little bit of magic eraser and you just pat it off like that. So I'm applying this fuchsia colour all over the orchid so that we have our base tone in place. Now we have got a couple of greens here but I've decided to mix my own to show you that you can mix them in a similar way to watercolour. So I'm going to go in with my yellow first, this is called sun yellow. So we have our yellow and then our blue which is sea blue to mix a lovely bright vibrant green tone. I'm adding a little bit of blue, an extra bit of blue here and then I'm going in with the apple green in a separate puddle. So as I said earlier on, the colours are very, very buildable, but it's really important that you let each colour dry, otherwise it will go a little bit muddy. So I'm just applying the blue tone to the bottom of this leaf just to make it um, look a little less flat and we're using the reference photograph as a guide. I haven't gone strictly to the reference photograph because as always a little bit of artistic license doesn't hurt. So I'm just applying the yellow colour here onto some scrap paper. I'm applying the blue colour on top. So you can apply them like this by mixing the colours together on a scrap paper, piece of paper and applying them directly to your painting like this. So there's a couple of ways that you can use them. And I suppose one way isn't better than the other. It's just what works for you. So you can mix your colours by layering them up on the paper and then applying them to your painting this way. So I'm applying a really light wash of the two greens. You can see how I'm mixing them together here um, with my number eight size round and all of the materials I will link in the description box underneath this video. So I'm just continuing to pick the colour stri straight from the block here and just mixing it in my palette. You can see I've got a lovely blue tone to the bottom of this leaf here. As I said earlier on, it's all about building up your layers and having your kind of colours varying a little bit as you work through the tutorial. 
So how do you obtain the reference photograph and your line drawing? Well, you can join our Facebook group. We are a lovely community over there. You can have access to all of our reference photographs and line drawings from our YouTube channel. And you can also post up your finished paintings from our channel there. Have some feedback from both me and our other wonderful members. But I'll also put the line drawing and reference photograph right at the end of this video. So be sure to stay until the end where you can screenshot it and then print it out that way. Everything's now dry, so we can really start to think about building up our colours. So I've just put um, a little bit of the fuchsia colour here on my scrap paper and now I'm using the sun yellow along with the blue as I did before. So it's sun yellow and sea blue to mix this green colour on my paper. I'm also scribbling out a little bit of the apple green and I will apply them in the same way as before. This time I've switched down to my number four size round. This is a silver line brush. I bought it from Jackson's Art and it has a really fine point. It's a synthetic brush, which I love and it can get into all the little corners really, really easily. So now that we've got our base color in place, we can start to build up the colors. Notice at this point, how messy the application looks, but this is perfectly normal and it's all part of the process. It's what we call the ugly duckling stage and you can easily work through it as you build up your colors. So please don't be put off if your painting looks like this at this stage, it's absolutely normal and it's how it's meant to look. With our initial layer in place, we can use that as a guide to build up our other layers. adding a little bit of the yellow colour to the top because I want the leaves to have a, a sort of graduated look. So we have our lighter colour at the top and our darker colour at the bottom. Once again, just using our reference photograph as a guide. So as I said, be sure to stay right until the end because we will put the line drawing and reference photograph there so you can screenshot them and print them out. Of course you can draw your flower freehand if you want to. But on this channel, we like to trace them down because it does save time and it means that you can press on with the important thing, which is painting. So once again, I've taken the color directly from the, the block there and just adding a tiny bit of water to spread it out. It's crucial that you have the correct amount of water when you're using ink tense blocks, because if you don't have enough water in your mix, they can go a little bit sticky but you'll soon get the hang of it and they are really, really easy to use. And you can even use them wet on dry as I'm using it here. So just by applying that color on top of the already applied paint, you're working wet in wet. Notice how easy it is to spread. Um, I'm using a tiny little puddle of water in the middle of my palette there just to clean my brush and blend the colors together like this. I'm not being too fussy about the colours of the leaves at this stage. I just want to get the depth of colour and the tonal contrast so that we can build up the colours later on. I've done the same on all of the other leaves in the same process and I've cleaned down my palette. So we're now going to start building up the colours again. It's really crucial that your colours are completely dry on your paper before you do this. Otherwise your painting will go muddy, particularly so if you're using mixed media paper as I am today. So I'm mixing, um, this is apple green with the sea blue and just to get a little bit of a darker color there. I'm also using a tiny bit of the indigo intense block there. And now we have the fuchsia color going in. I wanted this to be a sort of really dark, kind of grayish, purpley green, so that we can add some contrast. This is the yellow color. And again, the, leaf, the uh, apple green with the blue with a tiny bit of the pink tone. This just takes the kind of acidity out of it a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural. So with the dry paper now, we can start to go in again using a mixture of the colors that I have on my palette. You 
you can see how I'm using the darker tones towards the bottom and the lighter towards the top. Notice at this point how this leaf has a more unified look and that kind of blotchiness is disappearing as we start to build up our layers. Use a really light touch when you're applying them. You don't want to be heavy handed with this, just a really light, gentle touch and that will ensure that your paint is applied wherever you want it to go by using a light touch and applying it like this. And I'm just adding a bit of detail in the middle here to separate out these areas. And I've just gone outside the pencil line, so this is where my flat synthetic brush plays its part. So with the colour that I've mixed on my paper, we can apply it this way, as you can see me doing here. And applying that lovely sort of um, bluey green tone, and then it's merging into the more yellowy green tone, and just carrying on building it up. At this point, I'm starting to pull out a few lines within the leaf to give it a bit of um, a bit of texture and make it look a little bit more realistic. And we can again build on these later on. There are quite a few layers involved in this little piece, so you'll need to be a little bit patient, particularly when you're waiting for your painting to dry. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of the fuchsia colour to the top here to take out that definite sort of um, brightness in the green. So that just tones it down a little bit. So you can see the colours that I'm mixing here. I just want to tone down that green and just adding a tiny bit more yellow and just applying it to the centre of this leaf here. Now, if you do like using Derwent Ink Tents, we have done another tutorial where I show you how to paint uh, a really subtle pansy using the Ink Tents pencils, if you have those. And if that is something that interests you, I will put a card on the top of your screen right now, so you can click through to that after this video and have a little look. So this is the darker value, so to recap, that is the, um, the green colour that we mixed up with a tiny bit of that um, indigo uh, along with the fuchsia, just to make it that kind of really dark tone. And I'm just patting my brush on the kitchen paper to take off the excess ink. And I'm now starting to go over the initial lines that I applied, so sort of our darker values need to be put in. We upload new content every Tuesday on our channel, so if you are new here, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you'll be notified when we upload new content. We're also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, so do take a look, and if you are enjoying this video, do give it a big thumbs up. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. So I've continued the process on all of the other leaves and this is bark. This is a really sort of almost like a purpley brown tone, absolutely beautiful colour and I'm using this colour to really enhance the darker values on the leaves. As I said, make sure that everything's completely dry and you can see me here just adding a little bit of detail and working through the leaves one by one, sharpening up the outside areas as I go. I'm using a plain water glaze on some of the leaves just to give them a little bit of uniformity and when this is dry we can really start to focus on our flower head but meanwhile we can just use this plain glaze of water to work through and merge those colours together gently. So let's focus on our flower. I've scribbled out some of the um, fuchsia and I'm also using poppy red. We don't want the flower to look flat so it's really important that we build up our colours to give them the depth of colour that we need and also a little bit of tonal variation and um, as we work through you'll see what I mean. So 
I'm using my number eight round brush here to apply the second layer of intense block. I'm working around it petal by petal and again working around that central bit. You want to keep that white and just adding some water so that it makes the application of the intense block a little bit easier. We don't want it to be sticky and muddy and by adding a little bit of water, it just makes the application a lot, lot smoother and a lot easier. You can see that I'm just taking this all over the flower head. Now, of course, it's going to look flat until we start to add our other values, but don't worry about that. It's all part of the process and you can see me here just picking up a tiny bit of the poppy red and just adding that to the outside area here. I'll take this color all over the other petals in the same way. Using the tip of my brush to take it to the outside edge like this. I've got a little bit of ink on the outside of that petal there, but it doesn't matter. We can disguise it later, as you can see here. And I've applied it all over the other petals and it's completely dry. So I'm picking up the poppy red, which I've started to apply onto this upper petal here. You can see that by adding the poppy red, it's already given it a little bit of a, a boost so that we can see that the color isn't flat. So I'm using my number four silver line brush here just to apply the color, but of course you use whichever brush you feel comfortable with. Using the little puddle of water in my palette there, and I'm now applying the red color, which is the poppy red, to some of the areas on the petals where I felt that it needed that little bit of a tonal variation and color boost. You can, of course, apply your color from the Inktense block directly onto your paper. And the reason I didn't do this was I felt that it did leave some sort of um, marks underneath and I wanted a smoother wash on this occasion. Now I'm using here the Fuchsia Inktense pencil because I wanted to add a little bit of depth of color to the outside of the petals. Had I used the Intense Blocks a block, I felt that I wouldn't have got the depth of colour that I needed. So because I had the Intense Pencil, I decided to use this. But of course, you can continue to use the blocks in the way I've been using. I just happened to have a pencil, so I thought I'd try it out. Remember that Inktense blocks and Inktense pencils are permanent when they're dry, unlike watercolour. Watercolour can lift off when it's dry, when you apply your darker layers, but of course with these, once it's dry, it's there for good. So this will give you the opportunity to build up the colours in such a way that you... This is kind of like a watercolor glaze, but with intense blocks. So, and applying this now to, this is the poppy red, and we're applying this to the center where we've penciled in that little uh, pattern that's underneath the middle of the flower. You can just about still see the pencil lines. When you draw your flower, make sure that you have a really clean outline so you can still see that uh, pattern underneath. So I'm using the blue, this is, um, this is indigo, just to darken up the values once again. So I did say that there were quite a lot of layers on this and this is definitely the case. So I'm using this bluey sort of purpley tone to just go over some of the darker values within that central pattern that, that's on the flower. working through bit by bit, just looking at your reference photograph and assessing where you feel you need to put your darker values. And also using this opportunity to sharpen up my outside edges. I love the strength of colour with these intense blocks. I mean, it's they're so vibrant and so strong. It's such a joy to work with. 
If you haven't used them before, you have them in your kit. And I know a few of you have, because we've talked about this on uh, Instagram. Um, please use them, give them a go. Don't be worried about them. They're very similar to watercolor in the way they handle, but they do give very different results, I think. And you can still blend them in in the same way that you would use watercolor. So just continuing to build up those colors and you can carry on building them up. You don't need to be too worried about there being too many layers as long as you don't go too thick too quickly. I'm just extending this um, little petal here because I felt it was slightly misplaced. And I'm working around that middle part. adding a few of the dots that are the pattern on the flower here. Just adding some detail around the outside edge, working directly from the ink tents block. adding a tiny bit of the tangerine. This is for the middle. So we have the yellow color, which is sun yellow, going on at the top part, and then the tangerine and yellow mixed together for the bottom area here. I'm just using the water glaze to merge these colors together because I felt that they were a little bit uneven. And you can do that if you find that your colors are not quite spread evenly enough, just do a, a plain water glaze and make sure that it's dry. I'm applying another wash of the sun yellow and apple green here because I felt I needed to merge those colors together a little bit. Going back to the bark, And once again, mixing up the green color that we mixed at the very beginning using sun yellow and sea blue. Just working upside down here because I wanted to sharpen the outside edge of this leaf. Look how smooth these colors are now that we've done that glaze. It really has merged them together, making them look super, super smooth. Ordinarily on this channel, we work with watercolor and we do a lot of botanical painting. If that is something that interests you, I'm going to put a playlist at the end of this video along with the line drawing and reference photographs. So do take a look. We've got plenty of um, botanical painting tutorials there. So um, if you want to check that out, then, then do have a look. I'm really adding a darker value here now. You can see how this is coming to life. Don't worry about building up your layers because you can, as I said earlier on, you can really sort of go to town on this and not worry about that paint lifting off. If I were to do this with watercolor by now, I would be a little bit concerned that the paint would be um, lifting off the paper. But of course with these, once it's dry, it's permanent. So you can carry on building up your layers until you're happy with the depth of color and tonal contrast that you have. This color here is called leaf green. It's kind of like an olivey tone. And I'm just using this now to really put the final touches onto my leaves before we turn our attention back to the flower. I'm using a light touch to just add these details. And this is just a really weak mix of the bark color to put in the middle. 
and I'm just using this is poppy red to add a little bit of detail. This is the first time that I've worked with Derwent Inktense blocks and I've really enjoyed using them. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you would like me to do more, then do drop it in the comments below. I'd love to have your feedback um, to let me know whether you'd like to see any more tutorials like this. So do let me know. This is the um, poppy red and I'm using it to sharpen up the outside area around the yellow tone that we've just applied. And I'm also using it to create a little bit of detail on the flower head. Everything's completely dry and it really has to be completely dry. I'm using a white gel pen now to add some more detail, to add the sort of pattern that's on the flower. It's crucial that your painting is dry before you do this, otherwise your, your roller pen won't work. So because we have that pencil line in place and you can just about see it, I'm using the pen to go around that color like this and just add the detail and work through in this slowly but carefully. Going around, and you can just add it a, a little bit thicker here and there. If you look at the reference photograph, you'll see that it has a kind of thicker area from, as you work through. Um, to negatively keep those shapes would have been a complete nightmare. So to use this pen to do this was an absolute joy. So easy and look how effective that is. Really gorgeous. I love using this. I'm mixing up the, um, this is the poppy red, I'm adding it to the outside area of the flower like this, just to give um, a little bit more contrast. I felt that the outside edge was looking a little bit flat and I'll continue to do this right until the end of the painting. I'm going to stop talking now and let you watch the rest of this in peace, listening to some music. Remember, I'm going to put the line drawing and reference photograph at the end so that you can screenshot them and um, print them out for yourself. And of course, I'll put that playlist up if that's something that interests you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me have your feedback and I'll see you soon.